Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Dennis Wilborn. I want to welcome you to today's session of uh, On the Radar. It is the 17th of March. The market has done a really nice reversal today and is jumping up up to the upside. We'll uh, see how, what, you know, what caused that per se. Let me see if I'm on live. And I am, so if you're joining us for the first time, uh, after I get done with the, the uh, this session, what I do is I post it to both uh, my active trend, my uh, Market Tech Talk YouTube channel, and then also I uh, post it to um, Instagram TV, so you can see it on either place. And so, kind of interesting what took place today. Uh, as you know, it is a Fed day. The Fed met uh, earlier today. And they made a decision. What decision did they make? So I won't hold you in abeyance any longer. Let's see what decision they, in fact, did make. They made this decision. See that? The Dow is higher as the Fed sticks to no rate hike until 2024. Now, is that realistic? I don't know. But that's what they're going. That's the story. And they're going to stick with it for the time being. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, again, welcome. If there is a stock you want us to take a look at, you can always just plug it in uh, to the comment section and say, hey, Rick, how you doing? I will check the, uh, the uh, comment section on Instagram prior to uh, uh, closing down shop. But let's go ahead and jump into the... Uh, Let's jump into the uh, session where we want to take a look first at the S&P. The S&P has done a really nice job of, ba of basically, we had a breakout and then we get a retracement, fell down below the breakout level, which is right there at the 394 level and busted on up to a new all-time high. Targets that I'm looking at on the the S&P is up here at the 1272 extension. Uh, and if we go higher than that, I would look at basically going on up to the 1618 extension up at the, about the $408 level on the S&P. As you know, if you've been following me for any time whatsoever, I, I prefer trading either the... Um, um, the uh, S&P, uh, correction, the uh, NASDAQ and or as represented by the Qs or the Russell is represented by IWM. We were in a trade a little bit earlier with our um, uh, autopilot leverage ETF trades on the IWM. We would trade it into TNA and basically we were taken out of that trade today and now we're getting a nice reversal. We'll see where that goes. Have we, does, is there enough that we can say, you know, let's go ahead and jump into a trade or let's, you know, what's the trigger? That's that's basically the bottom line. I, I'm never looking really to just jump into a trade. I want to, uh, I want to basically take the trigger. Right now, S&P moving back up to the upside. Uh, a part of the things that we want to be looking out for, though, is this one. Yes, we are moving higher. However, we are doing it under lower momentum. Doesn't mean we can't continue to push higher, but if the momentum starts to continue to lag, you know, to the downside, and we get a crossover, I'll be looking for a, uh, a potential reversal signal, reversal candlestick for a move where? Back down to the uh, moving averages, primarily the 20 day moving average, that's what uh, prices tend to revolve around. So we'll look for a reversion of the mean, to the mean, back down to approximately the 20 day moving average. What, what now? A look here, I just wanna take a look at a couple of stocks that uh, you might wanna just keep on your radar. 
Okay. Um, the cues. Okay, we have a nice, we have a very good breakout. We had a, a uh, as I said yesterday, yesterday's candlestick on the cues uh, was showing a, eh, not quite a shooting star, but it was clearly a, you know, what we, we considered a bearish type signal. Price action pushed down all the way back down to the eight day moving, eight and 20 day moving average and rebounded. And so in reality, what's happened here, and this is a kind of a classic move, and I'll be looking for more upside now on the, um, we're looking for more upside now on the cues. Because what's happened? We broke out of this trend line that ran, runs down here, broke out of that trend line, came back and retested the trend line and rebounded today. If we go ahead and take out the high, we'll look for a continue to move on back up, potentially back up to uh, uh, the past highs for the year. We still need some kind of a trigger. So I'll be looking to the intraday uh, 30 minute or six or 15 minute chart. See if this pops up here the way I want it to. And there we go. That's the weekly chart. Let's pop on over to the um, little bit of slow mo on the uh, slow mo on our. Um, bandwidth today. So as you see, we popped up, we challenged the high from yesterday. Now we're getting a little bit of a recoil back down. Uh, we have moved everything back up above the moving averages. Again, this is on a 30 minute chart. So I'm looking for some kind of a pullback, probably down into about the 319 level. That's what I'll be looking at, jumping on a trade for that potentially tomorrow. Uh, and I'll throw that out as a potential uh, uh, move and I'd want to be getting into either options on the queues or I want to be getting into a jump into a trade at approximately somewhere between the 91 and the 89.50 level. Actually, yeah, about the $90 level on the TQQQ. That's what we'll be looking at for the. Uh, for a potential move higher. Go now go back to the daily. The move on the on the NASDAQ was, I think, stronger than uh, what we saw on the other. Uh, I think that also the Fed coming out and say, hey, we're gonna leave rates alone until 2024 uh, will be good for the technology sector and we'll start moving back up. Uh, IWM, IWM fell down below, took out some, you know, uh, found support and then rebounded back up above the breakout level. So we'll be taking a hard look on that tomorrow. We're getting a fairly classic type move here, and I want to highlight it to you on the TSI. The TSI, as we said yesterday, sometimes you can get a squeeze on the TSI like we see right there. As you see, it looked like we were going to get a crossover on the TSI. Didn't happen. The days you know, earlier today, it was showing a crossover to the downside. But by end of day, that's why it's so important to come back in the last hour to two hours of the day to see what is the rest of the story is. Price action pushed on back up, hasn't taken out in the high yet, but I'll be looking for something similar on the IWM, and I'll flop over then to the uh, the intraday chart. Look for a pullback down into that, that level, about the 230 level. And then if I get a nice signal, good signal with lower TSI, that may give us an opportunity to jump onto a trade not you know on TNA again. One of the things we have to be very uh, you know, realistic about is oftentimes when you get washed out of a trade, we have to be prepared to jump right back in once we get a new setup. And so that's what I'm waiting for on TNA because with no or with basically 
no increase in interest rates, the small caps should find that very, very beneficial going forward. So that's uh, another thing that we will be looking at. And so, so that's what we've got with TNA. Now let's jump down and look at a couple of stocks that we'll just, you know, keep our eye on. Um, we had put in an, or we had put in a, uh, a discussion yesterday about Netflix. Why Netflix was showing some real weakness? Uh, is Netflix still showing us some weakness? And the answer to that question is okay. The 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 Netflix we had a shooting star based at right at the moving averages, the thirty four, the fifty, and the twenty. We went down below that and, and, and broke out. So we're in kind of a mixed bag on Netflix. Any type of a retest down around the 20-day moving average may very well provide an opportunity to jump on a trade up to the upside. This is one of those that we've, I've been working on laying out some option-type trades where uh, it would be like trading three to six weeks out on something like Netflix with the expectations it's going to run back up to the uh, 552 level. Uh, with that, we could buy a, a uh, debit spread, a call debit spread, like halfway up, let's say the, two thir uh, the 535 by the 540. We may be able to get pick that up for about a dollar, dollar and a, you know, somewhere between a dollar and a dollar and a half. And it's a five dollar wide spread. And if we've had a momentum shift, which we have had, we would anticipate prices going on up and through that and just moving higher. It's a really great way. The, the risk reward is greater than one to one. Matter of fact, it's almost three and a half to one. Uh, and the, the issue and key part of doing that kind of trade though is you know, the timing of it. And uh, Netflix looks like it may be setting up for a bounce higher. And we'd have to take a look at, let's pop over here to the weekly charts. And you can see, what's the weekly charts telling us on Netflix? Actually, weekly charts are just telling us, hey, we're, we're basically, you know, uh, consolidating. Horizontal consolidation, which is basically a fairly bullish type signal. And that's one of the areas where we would anticipate, anticipate it for actually moving higher from here. And we'll see what transpires. Now, this week's candlestick is not complete yet, but uh, you know, it's looking kind of interesting. Jump over to the next one. I, I'm interested in two more stocks. One, Tesla. Tesla, uh, we were in a trade on Tesla. We were taken out of it earlier today. Uh, for a small loss. Now price actions came have come back around and started to push higher again. I'll be looking at Tesla to do a similar type trade that we already had set up on it, uh, which is to look out about three weeks, um, actually about a month, four weeks or so, to at least April 16th. Come on. To at least April 16th for what? Uh, for where price actions may go. I want to know what the, uh, uh, and so for through the 16th, I'll just run over here really quick and look at the option chain. Okay, as you can see out here, 16 weeks, $129 is the expected move. So I can run back now to my <clears throat> charts, 160, uh, correction, $129. Go back to the chart. So $129 from its high right now uh, of $700, we put it up at uh, $829. So if there's halfway in between, let's say the seven, you know, 775 to 780 up to 785, price action should go through that, but we'll wait for another setup. 
uh, for that to happen. <clears throat> and again, we would be able to sell the correction by the uh, the uh, April 16th, 80 and correction 775 calls or 780 calls and then sell the one that's $5 above that. Uh, should be able to get that out for about, you know, somewhere between a dollar and a dollar fifty. Again, leaving the same type of <clears throat> uh, potential, same type of risk reward that we had on, on the other. Uh, the other one that I like in that particular space is I actually like Ford. Believe it or not, I like Ford. I'm doing a, a test test product with a test uh, ask, uh, trade with Ford where I, and this is, uh, I'm doing it live. Now let me stop doing that on. As we see with Ford, Ford's got basically not quite a, a piercing line, but a nice reversal off of what? This uptrend line that we had identified, the past breakout area and the move higher. Ford replaced Tesla about a week and a half ago as the top uh, uh, ticker in the automotive uh, industry group per uh, investor business daily. So there's another one. Like the opportunity here. So it has held. Now we'll just be looking, is there another trade to get into uh, 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 Ford? What I'm doing with this <clears throat> is if you want information about how I'm, I'm you know, pulling together consistent income opportunities by selling covered calls and doing uh, uh, bull put spreads on this to generate, you know, just, you know, uh, weekly and monthly income on Ford, you know, just drop a note down in the, the uh, uh, comment section, or if you're watching this on YouTube, drop a, uh, a note down, hey, you know, hey, can you pass me additional information on that? I'll be glad to do that. We, we'll be posting that up on the uh, YouTube channel and our uh, active trend trading website. The other one I'll just leave you with today is, of course, I think we need some exposure in the area of the Bitcoin or blockchain or crypto. And I think one of the better candidates <clears throat> is Marathon. Uh, Marathon basically did a really nice reversal today. While this is a bullish engulfing, it's not a bullish engulfing that reverses an uptrend or downtrend. So just be aware of that. But it is a nice move off of the, uh, we talked about this at the Bay Area Moneymaker meeting last night, uh, is that it did a rebound off of 36. But just remember, this is, this is a, uh, you know, I like the entity because it has weekly options. But just remember, this moves, okay, like days move from high to low. High to low today is almost 18%. So what's that tell us? It tells us that we have to be very selective on where we get into a trade on this and keep our stops really, really tight. So I'm gonna be watching for a pullback where? To around the eight day moving average, which may be about the 39 level. That's where I wanna put in a, a list, a, a um, put in a, an alert. And then I may also do this one similarly to how we did the trade on Tesla and the one we're looking to set up on uh, on the uh, uh, Netflix. So, hey, that's all I've got today, guys. If you are, like I said, uh, please uh, let your friends know that we do this three times a week on Instagram live uh, uh, at approximately 1 p.m. Pacific time. If you do join us and you want us to take a look at a stock that you um, uh, want us to take a look at, you can do that. All you got to do is basically send me a, a text, send me a, a DM, or drop a note in the comment. And I'll be glad to take a look at your stock. Uh, if you're joining us on uh, Facebook, on Correction on YouTube, uh, please subscribe and hit the like button for the subscription. 
and uh, hit the bell to make sure that you're notified when we post any any new training videos over there on YouTube. So with that, I'll basically say, Rick, good to see you. Uh, aloha. God bless everybody. Have a great, great rest of your day. See ya.